I don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Which one should I get? Oh, uh, let's go to the far right. I will take your hand and we'll rise up from the dust. Oh, here we go, 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 let us see you later. All right, gonna wash it and then we're gonna go ahead and go over to the spot to do the Q&A. All right, so we're back here at the spot. Today we're gonna to be doing a Q&A on bad lucks. And I know a lot of you had questions about the wheel setup, about the hood vents, about the corner lights, about the whole aero setup. So we're gonna go ahead and answer those questions today. So a couple weeks ago on my Instagram story, I put a questions tab. So basically you click on it, you put your question in, and I'm gonna go ahead and answer those questions here on this Q&A. So if you guys aren't already following me on Instagram, make sure you follow me at bad underscore lux. So the next time I do a Q&A, you guys don't miss it. And if you guys have any specific questions, feel free to input them there or drop it down in the comments below. All right, so every YouTuber has a name they call their subscribers. I, as of right now, don't. I've thought of bad luxers, bad high luxers. It just, it just doesn't go, I feel. So uh, for right now, I think I'm just gonna call y'all baddies. To me personally, that sounds pretty cool. It's also funny. If you guys have any other recommendations as for names to call you guys, feel free to drop them down in the comments. But uh, baddies is kind of growing on me right now, so try to beat that. All right, so I am extremely, extremely close to 10,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing, for following me on Instagram, for sharing this content also, and just overall supporting me. 10,000 subscribers is like a huge milestone for me and the channel. So I wanna like, give back in a way and sort of do kind of like a giveaway. I'm not sure yet what I want to give away or what I actually even want to do for my 10K. So if you guys have any recommendations uh, that you've seen done on like other channels that was pretty cool, uh, let me know about it because I really, really want to do something for you guys because you guys have been supporting me so much. So just drop it down in the comments and I'm going to read all of those. Sorry for such a long intro, but now we're getting into the Q&A. Also, I just want to mention that whoever's asking this question, I'm going to go ahead and link their Instagram at the bottom of the screen so you know who you are. First question is, why did you decide to one use swap instead of putting a turbo on the 22RE? And basically what it comes down to for me personally is price and reliability. Knowing me, I would want to do the whole turbo kit through LCE engineering and they're by no means cheap. I have a couple parts uh, on my truck currently and it's pretty pricey and also building the whole engine, I would probably spend anywhere from seven to $10,000 building it right. So that just didn't make any sense to me financially and also reliability. I know that if I put a turbo in a 22RE, it probably wouldn't be the most reliable thing uh, even after being built, but I just wanted a cheaper way of getting the horsepower and a more reliable way. So that's basically what it comes down to, price and reliability. All right, so question number two. Do you find it easy where you live for people to be interested in doing work on the truck? And absolutely not. People don't really like working on it locally because it is a lot of work, um, a lot of custom work for that matter. And before I found KPS, I went to probably about three other fabrication shops and they were charging me like ridiculous price numbers for simple things. And it just didn't make any sense to me until I found them and they just knocked it out of the park with everything they did to the truck. But yeah, back to that question. Locally, it's pretty tough to find anybody that wants to work on mini trucks. Next question is, what inspired your build? 
Basically, my truck was inspired by show cars and track cars. Basically, I love a clean car and I also want this thing to not only look really cool, but also be able to handle the track like a beast. So that's why I'm doing the whole suspension setup. And that's also why I've invested a lot of money into the whole aerodynamics of the truck. I still have to put that thing through a wind tunnel to see if it actually works, but hopefully it does. And yeah, that's basically it. Show cars and track cars inspired this whole truck. All right, question number three. New to following your dope truck. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What are your suspension plans? So suspension plans for the truck, it's pretty set in stone what it's gonna be. It's gonna be about a half inch to an inch drop on coilovers, front and back. And for the front, I'm gonna have tubular upper and lower control arms on a QA1 coilover with a custom strut tower to hold that in place. And for the rear, it's gonna be a cantilever coilover setup with the independent rear suspension that I have. And you guys can watch that in previous videos, uh, me going into depth about um, the whole rear end setup. So I am going a smidge lower and with the wide body, it should definitely look pretty aggressive. Uh, and track oriented, which is what I want. So for the rear cantilever coilover setup, I know that's uh, something new to um, many people. So I'll attach a picture of what that kind of looks like. So you see how the coilovers are set up in a V pattern um, and you see how there's a swivel mechanism that it bolts onto and then down to a push rod to the lower spindle. But overall, that's gonna be the whole suspension of the truck. So next question is, where did you buy the turn lights? I actually got a lot of questions uh, about this on the Q&A. And basically the turn lights are off the four wheel drive version of the truck. I bought them on eBay, basically they're depot lights. So it's a lot better quality. So what I did actually to make this, I'll walk you guys through it. So basically it's two sets of lights. For the first set, I cut out the lens and just use the housing. For the second set, I cut out the housing and just use a lens. So now I have a lens and a housing. That custom strip, it's called XK Glow Sequential Light Strip and I'll attach a link of it in the description. So once you get that strip, you take it out of the tube and there's gonna be very specific points where you can cut that strip. And right when you cut it, you just slide the tube back on, slide the end cap back on and drop it in and kind of where you want it. So that's obviously the design I chose. To get started on the build, you have to dremel out the thickness of the tube itself. You could paint the housing if you'd like, which is what I did. Once that's dremeled out, you drop the strip in. From the back, you're gonna wanna epoxy glue it and then seal it up. I use Gorilla Glue silicone. And once that's done, in the strip where it seals itself, there's gonna be a little tunnel and you're gonna wanna put something called butyl rubber. You can find it anywhere. Um, you can find it on Amazon or eBay. I'll attach a link of the one I got in the description. And basically it's a rubber that when it's heated up, it kind of gets squishy. Once it's out, you get the lens and you basically just press it on. After that, I sent the lens itself to go get vinyl wrapped in a dark smoke and finished product is what you see here. Next question is, would you ever build an 80s Toyota? And absolutely yes. I know for my next build, it's gonna be the same style truck as this, but a lot simpler. It's gonna have a 2JZ uh, air suspension, nice wheels, overall clean, simple build. Um, but I would definitely love to build an 80s truck. 84 to 88 or maybe the generation before that i'm not too sure but yeah 80s truck definitely on the list all right next question is where did you get your brake setup at basically the brakes are 13 inch rotor paired to a willwood superlight four piston caliper with a custom bracket and braided steel lines so basically this kit you can get it at revolution brakes i'm going to link them down in the description basically it's a bolt-on kit for our trucks 89 to 95. it improves braking power by like 10 times it's extremely good a really Really good kit i extremely recommend this kit the price is kind of up there but honestly i'd rather pay a little more than end up rear-ending somebody because i couldn't stop 10 feet sooner so yeah definitely recommend it look down in the description for that link cool guy too who makes them the only i guess modification you have to do is shave down the spindle a little bit maybe about an eighth of an inch which isn't tough to do at all the spindle is pretty soft the material and also while the hub was out i went ahead and pressed in some arp studs because it is going to have a lot more torque on the front wheels when i'm braking at higher speed definitely recommend that too those are actually off of mitsubishi evo i'll attach it down in the description too a lot of modifications you can make with these trucks all right next question is about how much money have you invested in your truck A lot of money. Next question. Next question. <laughs> Next question is, what got you into mini trucking? 
Honestly, I really wasn't into the truck at first because it was so beat up. I really just got it for point A to point B while I go to school, go to work, hang out with friends. And I slowly started cleaning it up because I could not stand looking at it. It was just so beat up. I ran into a member of what is now Explicit Bay Area. He started introducing me to basically the rest of the people locally that were into the whole mini truck scene. And I just grew tight with it. And it's just been uh, cool ever since I even go as far as LA to some meets. Uh, I know I travel like an hour plus just to go to some. And uh, overall, it's pretty nice rolling into a car show with a mini truck because there's not much of them where I'm from locally. Next question is, how'd you get the Cobra rims? So what you see here, these are 2000 Mustang GT wheels. These aren't the Cobra wheels. If you refer back to my first videos, you will see the wheels on there and they were wrapped in Mickey Thompson street comps. So basically the wheels themselves, I got off of Lethal Performance, the tires I got off of Jegs. A lot of people think you just bolt these on and everything's fine. You do have to do some modification. I know for the rear to fit the 315s, you do have to shave the fender. Also install lowering leafs. So the mounting bracket to the leafs doesn't touch the actual wheel if you lower with blocks. I do want to mention that for the rear, so it doesn't lean into the frame you want to get some sway bars on there and uh, Beltec sells a nice set and yeah basically aside from that i rocked them for about two and a half to three years and they were just some solid wheels highly recommend the wheels and i'm gonna go ahead and link them down in the description along with uh sizing offset and all that good stuff next question is how much was your 1uz and what kind of transmission are you going to use i'm saving to swap mine so the 1uz was about 900 dollars with tax it was about nine 990 almost a thousand dollars uh not bad for a complete engine um it did come with the transmission i'm not going to be using that transmission i'm going to be getting a xat adapter or a collins adapter basically to adapt a cd009 out of a 350z that should definitely hold the power that's also a six speed so that's going to be my whole engine and transmission setup if you're saving a swap i would probably want to put about three to four thousand aside because that's kind of what it's going to be after the harness after uh the fuel pumps after like all the small stuff if you want to refresh the engine like i am going to be doing and powder coating and all that good stuff it's definitely going to run you a little bit higher but um i would say about three to four thousand dollars to save for that swap i want to say it's probably going to be bulletproof it's going to be a really good swap a uh, decent power for the weight of the truck and overall the whole swap is just going to be quality next question is can we still be friends even though you're famous I'm definitely not famous. Um, yeah, of course, we're still friends. Next time you see me, I'm going to Dockweiler, so you better be there. All right, last but not least, last question right here. Can I be on your level? Absolutely, you can be on my level. I'm going to go ahead and show you what level I'm on. Level two. All right, guys, that concludes today's Q&A. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, so don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Weekfest is definitely around the corner for the truck, so things are going to be going a lot more fast-paced, so don't forget to be updated on my channel. Also, in the comments, please let me know what I should be doing for 10,000 subscribers. I want to at least do a giveaway, give back to you guys. I don't know, something like that. Catch me next time. I'll see you later, baddies.